What's going on people? Back with a bang. This is The Money Management, back here to bring you guys a midweek recap today. Of course, I know the first thing you're wondering is where have I been? Well, the last, what, six, seven weeks since I made a video, maybe five, six weeks, has been a bit hectic. But either way, I'm back here today to talk about some trades we've taken recently, how I think the year's going to close out, what we've been doing in the Discord today, the past couple of days, and yeah, kind of just summarize what's been going on in the market over recent periods of time. Now, before we do that, as always, show some support, show some love. I know it's been a while, but I know you guys can still show love. Drop a thumbs up, comment, subscribe if you're new around here, and of course, share these videos with your friends. Now, to start off, I'm just going to dive into the markets because today, the markets were going down, down, down. But think about it. The last 10 days, I think, 10 days straight, the NASDAQ has closed in the green. If you look at the past, look, five days, look. NASDAQ has just been closing green, 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 green. It was only a matter of time, yeah, 10 days straight before we tanked. And today we dropped 225 points on the NASDAQ. Now, to put that in perspective, we're going to look at the S&P 500. Look at the last five days, look at the last month. We have been soaring upwards. It was time for a pullback. It was only right. The markets were way overbought. They had been bullish for, you know, two weeks straight. And of course, like I said, it was time for a pullback. Now, I'm going to jump over to trading view um, and talk about kind of the trades I took this week and um, then also talk about what I'm watching going into tomorrow and Friday. I do want to point out tomorrow I'm actually traveling to LA, so I'm going to miss the first three hours of market open and then the next two weeks I'm going to be trading those LA times, so those West Coast times, getting up early to trade the markets. But it's all fun and games. We love it anyway. So to start off with what I've traded this week, I'm actually going to jump over to AMD. Good old stock that we know and love, especially in our Discord. So let me pull up the daily chart for AMD and then show you guys kind of how it panned out. So I've taken a few different trades this week, to be honest. Um, AMD, let's see. So to start off with, as I mentioned, you know, I took the 141 calls just yesterday before close. You can see this hammer candle or inverted hammer candle right there. And I think one of the things with this one is, and I do shout out the group, Bob, Shonoff, Devin, all of you guys for putting this one out, right? Let me just open up the chart a bit more. You see the inverted hammer candle. That's one thing. You see back-to-back -back dojis, that's another thing. But you also realize that AMD has been soaring upwards and it was time for it to pull back towards the moving average. Now look at the four hour chart as well. Four hour chart tells an interesting story, right? We were bullish, we were above all the moving averages, we kept pulling them on back, but then the last couple of days we started to sell off below the moving averages. Now the reason I took the calls was because we had been pushing up above the moving average on the four hour chart, on the lower time frames as well. And every time we pushed up, we did pull on back, but towards the moving average and we kept continuing to rise up again. So I had a price target of 141, or actually sorry, $143 uh, for this week, but I entered the $141 calls. And as you can see, Tuesday pre-market, we did, we did actually hit that price target at 143 before selling off. Now, I did take a couple other trades as well this week. Exxon, another one that we know and love. I took calls in this yesterday, um, from Monday to Tuesday actually, and this one paid off nicely. Pushed up, pulled back, and pushed up again throughout the rest of the day. Luckily, I'd sold yesterday because today it sold off heavily. It sold off badly, like really badly. <laughs> We're training on back down to the $100 price point again. Look at the four hour chart. You see it broken below my level of support. Um, it was a level that we previously struggled to really hold above. And now it looks like we're probably going to sell back on down to that $100 level, which is always an import, important price point. You know, those $10 levels, $100 levels, those are important price points. Disney did pay off well for me though. At least one stock did. Um, I traded the $93 calls, got in on Monday. And to be honest with this one, you pull up the daily chart. It's been a bit erratic as of late, but it had this little period of time, especially during November, where it pushed up to highs of $97. Now this week, the price target was around that $94 spot, which we did just wick off before selling back down today. But if you see when I got in the calls, I got in on Monday. We pushed up overnight. Tuesday, we hit that $94 price point as well, sold off back down 
I guess towards this uh, $91 range. Uh, you see we sold off there last week Wednesday as well. Previously sold off a little bit below that as well. So just keep that on your radar as well, Disney, because I believe that this one is another one that's got good potential to the upside. We just got to be a bit patient with it again. So I'm out of Disney now. Um, and one thing, well, let me talk about a few stocks, which I do see making some good moves over the next few days. So we're going to go with a firm first. Why am I looking at a firm? Well, pretty simple to be honest, right? Over the last, let's get the weekly chart on. Over the last year, straight year, it's just been rallying, rallying, right? And it's finishing the year strong. Now we've had seven green weeks in a row. Um, it is due a pullback, but just not quite yet. So the thing with a firm is, if you look at the chart from way back, right? You will see we, we were at way high levels back in 2022, way high levels back in 2022. You see, we were over 130, 150, up to $170. Now we're back at 48. So you're probably thinking, oh, I've missed the firm. I, you know, it's already gone. Not really. There's still a lot of potential, a lot of upside, um, especially if you're trading it longer term. So what I mean by that longer term, I'm saying if you're trading it with calls expiring in February, March, this is looking good. You can get those $60 calls. You can get, you can get, let me see, go back. A, you've got to go back quite far for this one. Again, that $48 price point is tough. But yeah, there's a gap towards $78. You can still profit big off this if you're smart, if you trade it smart. Of course, it's had a lot of momentum as of late. Of course, it's had its really strong weeks. But then again, there is also plenty more upside to come. Today was a red day for a firm, dropped 10%. But other days, it's had its positive, strong day. So I am watching that. Another one on my radar, UPST. Upstart Holdings, very similar to a firm. You see it's had its really good, strong few weeks. And then you see pretty much over the year, it's really done magnificent things. It was down at $12 this time last year, and now we're up at $43. So just keep that in your radar. That's my level there, that $72 level. That's my price target, I'd say. We did hit that back in August and sold off since then, but we can still reach back up to that. All it takes is a little earnings play or you know, a good few days back to back for it to start moving a lot closer to that $72 level. So keep that on your radar. We're going to look at Tesla because a lot of my group do trade Tesla. I understand that. Prezi, Oscar, a lot of the guys trade Tesla. So Tesla. Well, obviously, as you know, and as you can see, when the market runs and rallies, Tesla runs and rallies. When the market sells off, Tesla sells off as well. So if Tesla, after a day like today where it drops 4%, which is a lot, by the way, a day like today where it drops 4%, what you want to look at is Seeing if it does pull back onto this level of support around 242, maybe breaks lower towards the 200 moving average. That's on the four hour chart at least. Looking at the daily chart, similar story though, pulling on back towards where the nine, nine moving average is. So another $5 drop, I'd say. That's what you want to keep in your radar. It still has a lot of room to the downside, 232. So that's a $15 gap to drop down to. Um, if you look at the four hour chart, again, that's still a you know, an eight, nine dollar move to look at. And if you look at your smaller time frames, then you'll see, hey, we're starting to trend bullish. We, you know, we've crossed the moving averages have crossed to the downside. We're still hanging above the 200 MA. But if we get below the 200 MA, as you've seen in the past, we can still drop in further 10, 11 dollars very quickly. So just keep that on your radar. Keep your eyes on that. Watch how it pans out. Of course, I'm going to touch on PayPal. Why? Because I had a 70 or a 64 dollar price point price target for PayPal this month. We hit the $64 price point. We hit that last week, Thursday. We pushed up towards it again today, but then sold off pretty quickly, to be honest. Now I'm going to, I'm intrigued to see where it pans out, but what I need is a confirmation of uptrend again, and I'll trade it to the upside. $3 move is all I need. Two, $3 move is all I need. There's a hammer candle right on the four hour chart, just below the nine moving average. But what you need to know is a hammer candle 
can also be a sign of a reversal. So this could actually be getting ready to start pushing up again. Do remember that. And um, yeah, long term, as I've said plenty of times, I love PayPal. If you look at this stock, you will see it has plenty more upside. When it was $51, I said this is a great buy. When it was $51, I said this is a long term stock, which I really love. Look where we are. We've already jumped $10 since then. And that was about a month, two months ago. So we still have plenty of upside for PayPal. My long-term price target is $122. Could take two years, five years, could take longer. Either way, I think this is a, a stock which you double up in. I think if you if you do like those long-term shares at a good price point, then I wouldn't look any further than PayPal, to be honest. And I do want to touch on a couple other stocks that I've traded over the past week. First one is PANW, Palo Alto. So these are the stocks which are which have contracts on the more expensive side. So Palo Alto, look at the daily chart. Nice uptrend. Every time we've broken below the moving average, we've pushed up pretty quickly again, broken back above the moving average. And then of recent times in the last six, seven weeks, we have pulled on back to moving average here, 21 moving average, and each time started to rise again. I think looking at the four hour chart, we have some downside potential, but this level here, this level here, that's just under 300, so the 299 level, that's important to me. That's where I think we will see if we if this is a make or break. If we push up or if we break that below that level, and I'll actually just mark it out for you. Just below, just right here. See where we kind of, you know, consolidate a little bit. Again, daily chart. Just that level, that level is key for me. If we bounce on that level, I expect more upside. If we break below, I do expect a, a healthy pullback with Palo Alto. And then, of course, Broadcom, ABGO. So, as I've said in the Discord this week, last week, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, all I need with this one is a pullback, a healthy pullback, so maybe a $20, $30 drop, and then we're going to push up again. Right now, we're starting to see signs of that drop. We've dropped, we've dropped from highs of... 11.50 down to 11.10. I still think there's more downside potential. And I would advise you to look at different time frames. There you go. Four hour might not tell us a great story. The daily chart does. One hour chart might give you an indication of another $60 drop ahead. That could be what happens. With this one, I like swinging it to the upside. Obviously, there's plenty of downside potential, but it's a very strong stock and it has momentum. Recently, it's had very positive bullish momentum and so you've got to keep that in mind when you do try and trade this stock so obviously if you did get inputs anywhere near the top which is difficult to do you've made good money now what i'm saying is if you're that confident you want to continue trading puts down to 1089 1090 then by all means go for it but i'll wait for it to pull on back and then when the uptrend starts again we get confirmation of that uptrend that's when i would look to trade it that's what I would personally do with AVGO. It has worked out for me. It did make me 5K last week or the week before last week. And honestly, if I could take that again, I'll be patient, as, as patient as I need to be. That's all I'm going to say for that, AVGO. Keep that on your radar. So SPX, well, first of all, tomorrow's Thursday. We have the GDP estimate coming out. That's going to affect how this moves. Then we've got a couple more economic reports coming out this week. And honestly, those are going to affect how this moves. All I would say is, again, we've been bullish six weeks straight. There was a pullback was expected. There was definitely opportunity to short the market. We just didn't know when. But as what happens with every single bull market, bull run, whatever you want to say, when there's plenty of upside, there are going to be pullbacks along the way. It doesn't mean we're in a bearish market. It doesn't mean that there's straight bearish momentum on its way. It just means that, hey, we might need to pull back before we go on higher. So sometimes you might look at it and say, hey, cash is king. I'm going to hold my shares for the long term. And in the meantime, just wait for the right opportunities before I trade options. But I'd honestly say I'm intrigued to how this hap you know, how this pans out. It looks like there is no Santa rally right now. That's what it's looking like. But to be honest, hey, things could change in a day. Friday, some economic reports could come out pre-market and change everything. We'll see how it pans out. But again, from where we're standing right now, if I'm to predict something, which we, you know, we never know what's going to happen. I'm expecting more blood, expecting more of a pullback, expecting more stocks to sell off. You might be seeing big money sell off 
at open tomorrow and Friday. I wouldn't be surprised to see that. And of course, again, Santa rallies are usually what goes on around this period of time. We might have had our early Santa rally. We might have had that, you know, the rally from the last two weeks. That might have been our Santa rally. Who knows? But either way, guys, as always, I do appreciate your support. I appreciate you guys watching and tuning in. Um, feel free to come to Discord, chill with us, trade with us, learn with us, get that education and focus on your long-term future. Furthermore, make sure you guys check out the Stock Option Starter Pack as well. That is 10 videos you guys will have access to those for life. And if you are new around here, as I said at the beginning of the video, make sure to subscribe and just keep following what we're doing. Keep learning from us. There's plenty of videos to learn from on this channel. Um, and apart from that, I think I might upload a California vlog while I go out there tomorrow, potentially. But either way, be back here next time for another video. And if I don't see you before Christmas, have a very Merry Christmas. Thanks a lot for watching. I got into making, you got into making. See you guys next time for another video. Peace. Game over.